The year is 327 BC. Alexander is campaigning in what is now the region of Uzbekistan. At this time, a letter from an Indian king arrives. This Indian king wanted Alexander to invade India. Who was this ancient Indian king? This ancient Indian king was Ambi. We have all heard about Ambi. But what is surprising about this name is that it does not appear anywhere in Indian sources. In fact, when we talk about Alexander's invasion of India, we find that there is no mention of Alexander's invasion in Indian text. Whatever we know about Alexander's invasion and Ambi, we know because of Western sources. And in these Western sources, the name of Ambi is also not present. He is called Omphis, Morphis or Taxiles. Now you must be wondering then how we have this name Ambi. We have this name Ambi because of Sylvain Levy. Sylvain Levy was a French Indologist who published an article in 1890 in which he argued that the Indian name of Omphis is Ambi. So he was the first one who gave this name Ambi. So this is the story of how Ambi got his name. Now coming to the question of why Ambi asked Alexander to invade India. So in order to answer this, we have to look at the political situation of Punjab during this time. Western sources tell us that Ambi or Omphis controlled the territory between the river Indus and Jhelum. His capital was the famous city of Takshashila. Across Jhelum was the territory of Porus, whose relations with Ambi were not friendly, to say the least. For Ambi, the situation worsened when Porus formed an alliance with Abyssaris. Abyssaris is what the Greeks called the king who ruled the territory north of Porus. Scholars believe that part of what is now the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir was ruled by Abyssaris. Ambi feared that these two neighbors of his would soon cross the Jhelum and attack his kingdom. It is because of this fear Ambi approached Alexander to invade India. And from the sources, it appears that at this time, Ambi was just a prince. It was his father who was ruling the kingdom. And his father must have approved Ambi's decision to ask for help from a foreigner to subdue the powerful rivals in the east. In the summer of 327 BC, Alexander crossed the Hindu Kush mountains. And somewhere around the region of Kabul Valley, Alexander met Ambi for the first time. Ambi was accompanied by Indian chiefs who had submitted to Alexander. And these Indian chiefs offered Alexander 25 elephants. After this meeting, most probably Ambi did not join Alexander in subduing the kingdoms that were situated in the Swat Valley and the adjoining regions. We can say this because when Alexander reached the Indus River, he found that Ambi had sent great gifts. These great gifts included some 30 elephants as well. These elephants and other gifts were sent to Alexander by Ambi because Ambi wanted to ensure that Alexander would not doubt his loyalty. This display of loyalty by Ambi was necessary because after crossing the Indus, Alexander will enter the territory of Ambi. So Ambi wanted to ensure that Alexander has his full confidence. Around this time, it appears that Ambi's father, who in one source is called Taxiles, had died and Ambi had become the next king. Now, this word Taxiles is quite important for us. There are some scholars who have argued that Taxiles was the dynastic title of the kings who ruled the territory between Indus and Jhelum. And when Ambi's father was the king, he had this title of Taxiles. And when Ambi became the king, he also adopted this title. And it is quite possible that the word Taxiles was the Greek version of the original Sanskrit word Takshilesh, which means Lord of Takshashila. We know that Takshila was the capital of Ambi. So this theory is also quite possible. From the different sources, it is clear that Ambi did not join Alexander in crossing the Indus River. When Alexander reached the eastern bank of Indus, he was now in the territory of Ambi. Although Ambi had already submitted to Alexander, but Alexander feared that all of this might be some sort of a trap. 
when Alexander started moving towards Ambi's capital, which was the city of Takshila, he saw that Ambi had arrayed his army in full battle-ready condition in front of the city. Seeing this, Alexander too ordered his troops to be ready for battle. When Ambi saw Alexander's army getting ready for battle, he understood that there is some sort of a misunderstanding. To resolve it, Ambi went alone to meet Alexander. In the subsequent meeting, Ambi, in the words of Diodorus, surrendered his army and himself to the king. By king, Diodorus means Alexander. In another source, we are told that when Alexander asked Ambi why he had arrayed his army like that, Ambi replied, and I quote, It was because he had intended doing whatever Alexander would have wished, at which Alexander further inquired of him whether any neighbor of his was causing him trouble. Morpheus answered that two kings beyond the river were preparing to make war on him. Abyssaris, who lived in the mountains, and Porus, whose kingdom was in the plain adjacent to the river. Alexander thanked him for his generosity, declaring that he should succeed to his father's throne and ordering that his name be changed to Texiles. In this source, Ambi is called Mophis, and the whole story of Alexander ordering Mophis to change his name to Texiles has not been accepted by most scholars. Now, coming back to our main topic, in one source, we are told that Alexander enlarged the territory of Ambi. But the same source also tells us that in the territory which lay east of Indus, Alexander appointed a governor who was a Greek. Now, the territory which lay east of Indus was the territory of Ambi. So, based on this source, it appears that now the territory of Ambi lay in the hands of Alexander. And based on this source, we are also told that Alexander had stationed a garrison in the city of Takshashila, which means that Ambi by this time was a king in name only. The stationing of a garrison and the appointing of a satrap east of Indus shows that Alexander was not taking any chances because the next ruler which he would have to face would not submit like Ambi. This next ruler was none other than Porus. And in the subsequent battle, which is known as the Battle of Jhelum, which is known to most of us, we find that Ambi had also provided some 5,000 troops to Alexander. Curtius tells us that after the Battle of Jhelum, when Porus was defeated, Ambi sent his brother in order to urge Porus to surrender to Alexander. In this meeting, Porus killed Ambi's brother and called him a traitor to his people. Whereas another historian, Arian, informs us that Ambi did not send his brother. Instead, he himself went to Porus. When Porus saw Ambi, he hurled a javelin towards him, which was successfully evaded by Ambi. This episode shows that for Porus, Ambi was a traitor, and the enmity between these two had not died down. Alexander, who had formed a close relation after the Battle of Jhelum with Porus, also knew that in order to safeguard his conquests east of Indus, he had to end this hostility. And the best way to end this hostility was to form a matrimonial alliance. Now, who married whom in this matrimonial alliance, we do not know. But it is true that after this alliance, we do not hear of any battle between Porus and Ambi. In 325 BC, when Alexander turned back from the Bayas River and started following the Indus, his Greek satrap, who was appointed in the territory of Ambi, was murdered. The Western sources tell us that he was murdered by his Indian mercenaries. Whether Ambi had any hand in this murder, we do not know. But in the subsequent change in the leadership, he became the co-ruler with a Greek named Eudemus. The duo ruled the territory between Indus and Jhelum, which extended as far as south as the confluence of river Chenab. After this, we do not have any information about Ambi. 
but the fate of his kingdom is known. His kingdom will be conquered by a king from the east. This king of the east will not only conquer his kingdom, but he will also fight against one of the generals of Alexander. I am here talking about Chandragupta and his fight with Seleucus Nicator. If you want to know more about this fight, do watch this video where I have talked about the different sources which we have about this fight and what are the different mysteries that are behind this episode. Do watch this and thank you for watching.